is back for one last round, baby. Well, actually, it's two mini rounds. You see, up until now, each season has been 10 episodes. And season four, part one, is seven episodes, which was a really nice surprise to get so many episodes in a part one. But that also makes me a little nervous that part two might just be three meager episodes to complete the 10 episode run. That would make me a little sad. Maybe they'll be supersized, but I'm hoping we can get like maybe five more episodes out of this because it's just so good. I don't want it to end, but it's ending. And in fact, the very first episode of season four, part one is entitled The Beginning of the End. That's right, this is it, man. And because of that, any character is fair game to be killed off from this point forward. And they ain't just teasing. Some triggers get pulled. Uh, and this adds an extra level of suspense to season four, part one, that the show realizes and uses to ratchet up that tension. What also adds tension is the glimmer of hope which emerges that Marty and Wendy might just be able to get away from all of this scot-free. Not just scot-free, but better off than when they started. It turns out crime does pay. And on that note, one subplot of season four, part one, is Wendy lying to herself about having her brother Ben killed last season. And that's very interesting, particularly the way they explore it. Loved it, very cool. But it occurred to me, because I was, I was racking my brain as to how I could review this show without spoilers. I was like, what am I gonna talk about? I don't wanna give anything away. So I'm gonna make some overall comparisons about characters and observations that you can chew on while you watch season four, part one. And it will add to your enjoyment, I hope. But anyway, I think that we as viewers have been lying to ourselves about how bad Marty and Wendy really are. Or when Omar Navarro acts like a charming businessman, you know, more like a charming businessman than a drug lord, we think to ourselves, he's not that bad. This is kind of like just a crazy business. But when the FBI reminds us that these people, including Marty and Wendy, are responsible for deaths, well, I think the show cheats a bit in that regard because they never really show us these deaths or never really allow them to hit emotionally. For instance, when a number of FBI, FBI agents are killed in a raid gone wrong, we never got to know any of them as characters, so they just come off as collateral damage. Uh, what's the Joker's quote, right, from The Dark Knight? It's only shocking if it's not part of the plan. And here, of course, the plan is Marty's. But let me tell you, Marty's plan ain't faring so well either, thanks to some very clever twists and big moves by other characters who, it turns out, have, their plan have plans of their own. Characters you would expect to have plans, and then some who you were like, oh my god, I had no idea you were making a plan. Uh, the biggest new addition to season four is Omar Navarro's nephew, um, Javi, played by Alfonso Herrera. Javi is educated in the United States at top schools and presents himself as even more of a businessman than his uncle. And at first, he seems like a preppy annoyance. But oh, he very quickly evolves into a very real danger. Even brazenly flirting with Charlotte, much like Navarro flirts with Wendy. And I thought that was fascinating. Like when he started flirting with Charlotte, you could see the look on Marty and Wendy's face, but I was like, whoa, holy crap. But then I thought about Navarro's continued flirtation with Wendy, and I felt that had to be intentional on the part of the writers. And I think that Javi really is a younger Omar Navarro. Omar, is, he just has ulterior motives that have softened him, or at least softened the, the, the him that he presents to Marty and Wendy, as we quickly find out in season four, part one. This was a, this is great. The show really hits the ground running. Uh, but Javi is a stark reminder of what we're actually dealing with here, that the Navarros are a crime drug lord family. And this baby drug lord looking to take over his uncle's empire, well, he has nothing invested in Marty and Wendy. He has no relationship with them. And, you know, it's up to Marty and Wendy to make him feel that they are of value to him. So that really actually turned out quite well. Javi is like a really good villain. I was like, I don't know what we're going to do about this guy. All right, there's also a private investigator who starts sniffing around this season, and I was surprised at how his story eventually came into play in like a good way. Like it started out that he just was annoying and you were like, why are we wasting scenes on this guy? But the writers, the writers on this show are very good. They have a plan. As for our favorite characters, just because Ruth left the casino and is no longer working for the birds, that doesn't mean she's out of the main plot. In fact, once again, Ruth has a fascinating storyline as she discovers maybe working for Marty wasn't so bad, especially to, compared to working for Darlene. Speaking of Darlene, you wouldn't think there'd be anywhere left to go with this character. You'd think they would have taken, she's a very extreme character and you, you know, a little Darlene goes a long way, both in, in within the show and as a character. 
But season four, part one, squeezes out some great scenes with her and even a few particularly memorable ones. And I thought the way they developed her romance with Wyatt also was done really, really well. Uh, and, and, you know, it took, you know, you're like, oh, I didn't think that you would t take it in that direction. And that's really interesting. And it's not what I expected. So I think that was fabulous. Damien Young, a fabulous character um, and an actor who doesn't get enough credit, gets even more scenes this time around with Wendy becoming more aggressive in politics. And Wendy's work with her foundation front, her and Marty's uh, foundation, offers some excellent commentary, not just on American politics, but also American pharmaceuticals. You know, this show talked about, uh, you know, fooling around with political, you know, technology and, uh, you know, um, getting profiles on voters and stuff using technology before it became a major part of the uh, global conversation. So I think that it's great. I mean, the show is very, very smart. Jonah is definitely turning into Marty Jr. I loved his subplot this time around. Well, Charlotte, who looks and especially talks strikingly like, like Laura Linney, well, so she's set visually, but as a character in terms of story, she's still searching for a subplot. She still doesn't really have one. Maya Miller, who I loved last season, also remains a key player in the FBI stuff. Well, let's just say it's shockingly good. But what about Marty and Wendy, right? Well, Wendy's really taken to crime, as we've seen over the past few seasons, and this season is no exception. And I guess there's some argument to be made for her, you know, history and politics really not being that different than crime. Although Wendy's often reminded that it is. Uh, but as I've said many times with this show, I love, and it's, I think it's refreshing to see a crime show where the wife slash girlfriend not only supports the male character who's like the lead, but become, we'll talk about Marty in a second, but the female character becomes a true partner instead of just complaining all the time or being a, a liability. And so I just love that about Laura Linney's performance as Wendy Bird and the way the character has been handled. As for Jason Bateman, remember how this show turned out, started out with, their affa with the affair that he discovered she was having? It's been a long road for Marty and Wendy, and I just think that makes them a great, you know, two great characters and a great couple. Now, as for Jason Bateman, whose dark turn here has captivated fans and earned the comedian even more fans than he ever had before. And he's been working for a very long time. He was like on... Uh, um, the Hogan family, like back in like, I think the eighties, right? So, and he just keeps reinventing himself. I'm very impressed with Jason Bateman. He, he's showing us a side of himself with Ozark that we've never seen before. And I think, you know, comedians often, you know, um, uh, uh, Robin Williams, Jim Carrey have often done dramatic turns, but I think no one has gone quite as dark and effectively as Jason Bateman. I think he's just done a fabulous job on this show. Uh, but he's been pulling back over the past few seasons. In some part, I think, because Marty, as a character, plays things very close to the vest intellectually you know, and emotionally. So he does draw, you know, pull into himself. Uh, Jason, uh, Jason Bateman's body language continues to be one of the best parts of his per uh, performance, and he truly transforms himself. Even little moments where like he's driving off in a speedboat with Javi from the casino, he just oozes coolness and, and well, at least you know, the idea that he has everything under control. Well, we know he's also panicking underneath, but it was just fantastic. I was like, Jason Bateman, you are super cool. He's just great. I'm hoping that when all is said and done, Ozark remembers that Marty is the main character here and that his arc completes itself. And there are glimmers of that with some interesting flashbacks to before the show even started. And they did a good job. There's just something they did to Jason Bateman's hair, which totally made it seem like it was like, like more than four seasons ago. Uh, not to say he doesn't have some fantastic scenes here in season four, part one. He certainly does. And one of the nicest things here is his, let's say, I think the best way to describe it is respect for Ruth that continues to be very touching. And she really is the bird's adopted third daughter, at least as far as Marty is concerned, even though neither of them will admit it because they're both so stubborn. And that's also what's very nice about this show and this season in particular. The And I think you can see it over the past seasons too. And that's the bonds of family, but also the threat that family can be and the family that we make. And it's very complex and interesting to see how loyalties end up. So Ozark fans, season four, part one is fantastic. Again, it drops this Friday, all seven episodes. I don't want it to end, but at least it's doing so in spectacular fashion. All right, that's my non-spoiler review of Ozark Season 4. Come back on Friday for the spoiler review. Share your thoughts uh, so far down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.